How we doing, people? Happy Friday. It was nice outside. Uh, my neighbors uh, are having they're having a good old time. This is what they're having. They uh, they're outside right now, making their way through modern country and the pop country of the 1990s, which is uh, an interesting little run, I gotta say. Um, I wanted to do this today. We're we're taking the week off from Bourbon Talk, so I just wanted to uh, jump on here for a couple of minutes and um, decompress after not necessarily one of the most dangerous or crisis-ridden weeks in American history. I mean, we've seen a few of those recently. Uh, just one of the dumbest weeks in American history. Like and and as and that's only because each week after each week becomes more and more dumb. Um, I've I've been sitting around just <laughs> yeah. I'll say hi to Karen. How are you? Um, cheers. Oh, they just started playing. I shot the sheriff by Eric Clapton, which is a truly uh, truly awful cover. It's not, not great. I'm not a Clapton guy. I don't know how everybody feels about Clapton. I'm not a Clapton guy. There are a couple of Clapton tunes that I think are decent, but I think Clapton is uh, highly, highly overrated. And when it came out that he was, um, you know, a, a white supremacist and a fascist, like I was like, yeah, that checks out. That sounds, uh, that sounds like Clapton to me. Uh, but I've, uh, I've just been sitting around thinking about this course and thinking about how everything is just now so symbolic and, and, and just completely devoid of any actual purpose or reasoning or uh, purpose. I, uh, I, 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 I'm going to remember for a very long time uh, the, the right reaction to uh, Dr. Seuss being canceled and this whole cancel culture thing. I mean, I, I've been laughing all day about the fact that it wasn't a democratic movement that did it. It wasn't Joe Biden or any democratic politician who canceled Dr. Seuss. It was the Dr. Seuss company that publishes his books that decided they were going to stop publishing his most racist, disgusting books, which should have not been published for a very long time. And the right spent days, days, absolutely doing nothing but covering this entire situation in a really embarrassing way. I mean, just like the most pathetic display from them in a long time, which is saying something. And the fact is that the, the that's all the Republican Party has is to complain about things and to claim that they are being discriminated against and that they are the most discriminated against group of people. So in order to fight back against that, they did what anybody would do, which is they bought a ton of Dr. Seuss books to like show it to the libs who like nobody was calling for this. And what ends up happening is those books, which are published by the Seuss company, became bestsellers, which means that in order to protest the canceling of Dr. Seuss, the Republicans and their voters gave a bunch of money to the company that canceled those books. That's incredible. I mean, really, I, I don't care where you are on the political spectrum. That is just, that's a, that's a snake eating its own tail, people. That's incredible absolutely incredible i mean just a you can't you can't ask for a better thing like I'm, I'm writing this book right now um and like eventually i'm going to get to modern times and i'm going to need like examples of the madness of the current moment and that's that's a great example i i i, I already made a note for myself to get to later like remember this dr seuss bullshit anyway yeah just dumb just real dumb and watching discourse and watching the way things play out. I've had a weird, um, had a weird few days in terms of, of covering politics. Ooh, Bob Seeker turned the page. It's a good choice. Seeker, Seeker's underrated. Seeker's underrated. 
Um, yeah, I've had a I've had a weird week. Uh, I think it was a week ago today that I criticized uh, the Biden administration for not doing more uh, off of the death of uh, Jamal Khashoggi. I have um, been experiencing weird harassment and threats from so-called leftists. Uh, some people saying that obviously I'm involved in a conspiracy against the Democratic Party and Joe Biden, which is fantastic. And I, I wish, um, you know, I, I, I would love to see that conspiracy narrative where I've just spent the last five years harshly criticizing Donald Trump and calling him an existential threat to somehow or another come aw- come around on the other side to go after the Democratic Party. It's It's incredible. The point is that I'm bringing up is that there is... Even among those people, there is a weird, weird sort of a, a, a mindset that is uh, problematic. And I think I think Trump, um, I think Trump injected a lot of this poison into it. Obviously, cable news played a role in it, but uh, you know, Trump turned this into a trench warfare situation, and it has gotten to the point where now. You know, you you have to tow a party line one way or another, which I think is just incredibly problematic. Um, I, I I'm sorry, but if you can't if you can't criticize uh, a politician that you support or a party that you support, man, that is a that's a bad situation. That's a bad road to go down. So that was fun and dealing with that and the Sioux stuff. Uh, it has been a really really weird week in that regard. Um, Not the worst week. Like I said, we've had plenty of bad weeks. I'm so glad, by the way, it's March 5th. Congratulations. We all made it through uh, the faux QAnon crisis of March 4th. Cheers to that. Um, For those who, (laughs) and by the way, good for you. Those of you who uh, stay away from that, uh, QAnon nonsense in the cesspool that is the QAnon mythology. Maybe you're not aware of what had happened uh, or what was happening on March 4th. So the whole idea, this is an incredible um, narrative development. Yeah, is Trump president again? The real inauguration day, like the old inauguration day. And this idea among a lot of QAnon people and like conspir- conspiratorial people on the right, They think that back in the 19th century, America uh, signed itself over, sold itself to corporations. I want to say that they think it's a British corporation and that we haven't had. We haven't had a United States president in centuries now, which is incredible. I mean, that's just when you're when you're creating stories like that and you're living in those kinds of stories, like best of luck to you. That's, that's an incredible fiction. Uh, the problem though, of course, is that now that nothing happened on March 4th, even though intelligence agencies and law enforcement agencies, um, found credible evidence that there were actual like three percenters and terrorists and separatists who were planning violence, uh, now people are going to be like, ah, that whole thing's over. Obviously, the the highest point for this whole thing was the Capitol coup. And uh, I think a lot of people are going to let their guards down, unfortunately, and believe that the worst is behind us, which means that the worst could possibly be in front of us. Um, yeah, just a banner, banner week in American history. Again, not the worst, just kind of up there for the dumbest because each week just continues to get dumber and dumber as we watch our culture just sort of consume itself um we have to stop march 20th i love it what i love about that is the apocalyptic cult uh mentality which is oh the world didn't end today maybe in a couple weeks I misheard. I misheard the deity tell me that it was going to be in a couple of weeks. I thought it was March 4th, but it's actually going to be March 20th. Was Potato Head this week or last week? Potato Head was last week, I think. And Potato Head was a precursor to the dumbness of, of Seuss. And it's like the problem here, and this is something to keep an eye on and something that I'm just sort of rolling around in my head right now and really thinking about quite a bit is 
it's going to be nothing. Oh, that's Tom Petty. See, they then the music that they've been playing, like incredibly loud for the entire neighborhood, has been a little spotty. They've had moments where they've like hit some good stuff. And they they've they've settled into a nice little thing. Okay, so we've got a little bit of Tom Petty. That's that's a that's a that's a nice moment. So um the Republican Party doesn't have an alternative to anything that Joe Biden would actually put forward or the Democrats would put forward. Like, to have an alternative, they would have to have an agenda. And they don't have an agenda. There's nothing that they want to pass. The only thing they would want to do at this point is, uh, yeah, that bird is having a hell of a good time. He's he's He sort of dominates the neighborhood a little bit. He's very loud. Very noticeable and loud. I got to know all the birds in the neighborhood over uh, the course of the pandemic. Like last summer, I basically lived in this hammock, and I got to know the bird populations. I got to know like the 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 politics of of the birds in my neighborhood. Hell of a good time. But the Republican Party has no alternative. It's not like they can come out and say, "Oh, this is better than that." Like they can't do that. The only thing that they have is faux outrage. They have these non-controversy controversies and that's all they're going to throw out there for the next couple of years until we get to midterm territory which is why the democratic party needs to just go beyond the filibuster just go beyond the filibuster and um just just pass some shit get some shit done because the Republicans don't have an alternative. What I would do if I was in the leadership of the Democratic Party or if I was on the Democratic Party period, which I'm not, I would just make them have to debate issues as opposed to just continually rolling out these non-issue issues, these outrage issues, because they are just, they're existing over here. And all they are doing is they're just continually like rehashing the same agreement politics. Yes, here in Nevada. That's what I'm drinking. But that's what I would do. And I would just, I, I mean, you got to move past the filibuster. It's time. It's time. It's, it's it serves no purpose. Just go. Just go ahead and go and get some, get some shit passed. Help some people out. Actually start with an agenda, agenda and ha- have arguments. Um, that's what I would do. Meanwhile, by the way, speaking of uh, the dumb American tendency, one of the things, and I haven't talked to Nick about this uh, on the Muckrake podcast. Uh, maybe we will, maybe we won't, or maybe I'll just do it, save it for a live stream. Maybe I'll just talk about it right now. Um, Asheville's a beautiful city. Beautiful city. I have some friends up in Asheville go and hang, up, hang out out there. Uh, well, back in the days where you could go and hang out with people. Never been to the Sierra Nevada Brewery. I hear it's nice, though. Uh, but one of the things that maybe I'll make, um, <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe I'll make Nick talk about this. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll do a, a, a like a couple of episodes on it. Has anybody, um, has anybody watched this young rock show? Has anybody seen this? I have been fascinated by it. It's one of the most interesting cultural, uh, things that is happening right now on network TV, which is just bereft of anything of importance. And you have this show, Young Rock, in which the future, uh, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, the former professional wrestler turned action hero, uh, turned beloved social media icon, for some reason, I don't know, um, is, is, is living in the future and giving an interview in which he's a front runner for the president of the United States of America. And in the interview, he is talking about how, why he should be elected by showing old pictures from the past or old scenes from the past. And the most bizarre thing about it is it's obvious that the rock is actually considering running for the presidency of the United States of America. And that this marketing thing, this framing of the show is kind of real. It kind of is laundering him. And it's on NBC, which of course, lawn, of course, NBC is, is responsible for laundering Donald Trump and giving and portraying this idea that he is a successful business person. It's intense. I, I I watched it and it is so intense and off-putting and weird. It's very scary. 
it's very, very frightening. And it's like multi-level marketing where it's like, well, I mean, we could go ahead and get advertising money to show this show. And then, by the way, I mean, you know, it's not like I'm really running for president, but maybe it will make it to where I can run for president. And maybe that will be part of it. It's really strange. And I will say that I, I think... Well, Reagan broke the seal, obviously, in terms of celebrities running for the president. But um, I'm I'm old enough, and maybe maybe I don't know if y'all were paying attention to this. There was a while where people were people were pushing Oprah really really hard to run for president, and people were just like, "Yeah, Oprah Winfrey, she needs to run for president. She would be great." And you know, they feel like they know her and all this stuff. Now it's moved on to The Rock, like. I, I I I don't want to bang this drum too much or too often, but we are heading into weird territory. Like this is this is like where America is kind of going. Ooh, Zeppelin, whole lot of love. See, here's the thing: when they stick to the '70s and the '80s, they kind of really kill it in terms of their playlist. It says a lot about a person. Okay. This is nice. But no, it, it is um, it is really, really strange what's happening in this country. And I will say that I spend a lot of time. Um, oh, Wells. Yes. Can't get you out of my head. Adam Curtis. I'm telling everybody to watch that. Everybody should watch that. That's that's uh, that's some weekend assignment right there. It's so fantastic. But we're heading in this weird direction where America is falling apart. The empire is coming apart at the seams and we don't know exactly what to do or, or, or how to behave. And meanwhile, we are so captured by spectacle and we're so captured by entertainments that we can't get out of them and like we're like yeah obviously like the avengers are like entertainment and meanwhile like the avengers are changing your entire perception of how power and reality work and they are paid propaganda for the military industrial complex and the pentagon and and they continue to push the mythology of american exceptionalism i was like i just like watching them you know it has nothing to do with anything else it's crazy. We are so lost in so many illusions. Whew. This country's weird. I was talking about this um, last night on Twitter, and, and it's like, <clears throat> and it's like, you know, the Republican Party is so pathetic and sweaty and desperate and just like so psychologically messed up. Yeah, no, that's right. I, I completely agree that every country is all messed up. This order that we have been in post World War II is coming to its conclusion. It doesn't work. It's been taken over by hyper capitalists who are hoarding all the resources and just absolutely destroying us. Uh, it's nearing its conclusion, and we have to make a decision about what comes next because this thing that we're in right now. It's about done. It's coming to the ideological end. It's coming to its conclusion. It is basically a zombie world order at this point. We got to figure out where to go next. We have to figure out where to go next. And I'll tell you what, I would much rather start choosing a better, real, more human future than letting tech do it, shoving us into alternate reality or some sort of... Uh, corporatocracy or just getting the hell off this rock and letting the rest of us deal with uh, global climate change. Or we can let the fascists just completely roll back all of uh, liberal democracy and push us all into serfdom, which I have to tell you the research I'm doing for the new book. Serfdom ain't great. Serfdom ain't, serfdom ain't, serfdom ain't great. Serfdom, uh, not, not to be controversial. I don't want to be controversial because y'all y'all know I like to I don't like to throw out hot takes. Surfed them bad. It is uh, really dangerous. Or, by the way, you could have the future that China is currently selling the world on, which is a unequal, oppressive, uh, technologically 
oppressive dystopia. You could have that. That ain't great. Yeah, I saw the cinema thing. That wasn't awesome either. That was um, what my favorite. was not my favorite not not great not wonderful oh the band they're playing the band they're playing the night they drove old dixie down which is a good tune problematic good tune really good but yeah the cinema thing bad really really ugly and bad and by the way i just want to say before i wrap this thing up the fact that we're even debating raising the minimum wage and uh, supplying aid for people in the middle of an economic apocalypse and a generational pandemic, it's so telling. It's such horseshit. We got to make big changes in the fact that people are even uh, pushing against small common sense reform is nuts. It's telling. It's really, really telling that that's where we are. Really, really telling. Um, I'm hoping we can get better. I'm hoping it can get better. I'm, I'm starting to see, um, I'm start, I, I, I keep saying this, but it's true. I, I, I'm seeing a lot of people getting involved in a lot of energy and a lot of push for reform and making the world better. I, I think there is, um, oh, Matt. Matt says, is the problem economic or political? It's both. It's both. And the fact is that the political system created an economic system that could grow and take over. And the um, basically the economic system has taken over the political system. I've been thinking a lot about um, what I would call the professional managerial class, which are like the people who like go to college and end up becoming like your boss or your manager or whatever. Um, they are the front facing like manager of a much larger economic system. And that's actually what our politics has become. They have become people who come out in front and they handle the PR for the people in the back who make the most money and are the most powerful. That's what politics is at this point. Politicians don't have power anymore. They have the ability to portray power and project power and to go ahead and run the system of the people behind the scenes, the economically powerful, but they don't have actual power. They don't have the ability to change. They're not going to have the ability to change until people at the grassroots level, at the people level, get behind something and create change and force reform and move inertia away, which we have to do. I mean, it's, it's going to be one of the hardest hardest jobs that me or you will ever have to do. If we can do it in our lifetimes, it'll be the achievement of a lifetime. I like to think that we can do it. I think we can. But you got to believe it. You got to believe that you can change things in order to change things, and then you can change things. But we can't just rely on these people because they're, uh, they're going to screw us over all the time. Yeah, I'm in a good mood. It's Friday, five o'clock, happy hour. Cheers. All right, I'm going to jump off here. Um, no bourbon talk this Sunday. We'll come back next week. Uh, Muckrake all this week. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Substack. Why haven't you done that already? I just sent out this big, giant um, uh, mailbag thing. I'm going to start doing mailbags where I answer questions. This week, I talked about everything from European post-World War II efforts to suppress leftist movements to pizza, which by the way, for the record, I'm a sauce guy. I don't know about the rest of you. I'm a sauce guy. I think sauce is the most important ingredient on the pizza. The crust is good. The cheese is good. The toppings are good. Sauce is what makes or breaks a pizza. I truly honestly believe that. Put the extra sauce on there, figure it out. Third of all, I included, and I hope people enjoy this. It was a little nerve wracking. Included the first per, uh, eight or eight and a half pages of my novel in progress. Um, just unedited, ready to go. It's out there. So uh, yeah, that's over on the sub stack. That was scary. It is weird to throw your work out there before. Um, yeah, I don't want the super wet sauce either. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate it. I like a good consistency to the sauce. I like a little bit of a... Um, I like a little bit of a substantial sauce, if that makes sense. 
Somebody asked what, what Substack is. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and throw the link over here because some people don't know it. Other people don't. Anyway, feeling okay. There it is. It's over in the, uh, over, over in the, in the chat. You can find that. Maybe I'll go ahead and put that in the, uh, the notes on this thing. I'm really enjoying that, by the way. I appreciate, um, I appreciate that the, the, the people of Bourbon Talk told me to do this. I never, I, I wasn't thinking about Substacks, and then somebody told me about Substack, and I was like, oh, I'll check it out, and I'll see what it's about. And people were like, hey, this might be good for you, and it has been. It's been really freeing and nice. I'm enjoying writing over there. Anyway, it's the freaking weekend. I hope we all have a good time. I hope we all uh, are safe and good and healthy. Hopefully, next week won't be terrible. Hopefully. Hopefully. Next week will be better, and maybe some of the, the dumbness and the awfulness will get better. So, everybody, be good, be safe. Bye.